Welcome to the Built for Anything podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I have with me the lovely Sam Lau. <laughs> What's up? Hey, man. How's it going? I'm happy to have you on. Thank you. Tell people who are not familiar with you just a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Sam Lau. I am a general all-around artist. My current forte is rapping. So Rap. Yeah. So you, you got the Drake thing going on. You rapping yeah. and singing. Absolutely. You ever do it on the same Absolutely. track or is it either oh, a yes. singing song or a rap song? No, it's we do both. We do both in this house. Okay. <laughs> Nah, that's what's up. It's an artist, singer, rapper, and just recently, mom. Yes. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a little girl at home. She's going to be four months soon. So That's awesome. Very Her excited. name? Her name is Tesla. Te- Not after the car. Hey, the I was just going to say. Woo, woo. We cultured in here, okay? <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, you think she's going to be an artist? Because I feel like you, I know you are. I know your husband. You just had I just had him on Jeremy Biggs. Definitely check out that podcast. Um, he's obviously good as well as yeah. an artist. Hey, man, might be a little we Picasso, jo- a little something. You know, we'd hope so. But mm-hmm. we also joke that the art from both sides will cancel out and she'll be like an accountant yeah. or something. <laughs> and we're like, we don't know math, don't but do can law. you do our taxes yeah. this year? So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Tom, Tom will tell. Yeah. How do you, well, let me ask you this, which out of all of those things, all three of those things, mm-hmm. um, which would you say, if any, you're probably more passionate about? Uh, not including mom, because obviously oh, that yeah. trumps all right. everything. Let's, yeah, so correct. Slide that correct. Off the table. Let's, let's, that's the trump <laughs> card. We go, not, we're not going to use that. Out of the three other things, um, what would you say? Is definitely the more musically inclined. I can't, it's hard for me to pick um, between like rap and singing yeah, because I of. do both. They mm-hmm. go hand in hand. I really don't know which one I'm going to lean towards until I have, you know, until I've started the track. Mm-hmm. So it could really go either way. Mm-hmm. How would you describe your music for those out there? Is it is it hip hop? Is it is it, you know, how would you describe it? Um, I would pop like what, what would you call I would it? describe it as hip hop, but it's definitely pop leaning. It okay. definitely can hit that sort of like crossover, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, especially with both the rapping and the singing. And then as far as like subject matter, like, you mm-hmm. know, it's everything from introspective to things that are a little more hard that you don't want to play in front of your mom. Mm-hmm. So it can really go either way. And. Man, I feel like I'm thinking if I should ask this question because it's almost <laughs> taboo for for artists out there. It's like, so do you write your own stuff? Is a lot I of do. your stuff okay? No, I I write Ooh. all my own music. I um. felt like that could have went left. <laughs> you know, you could have been like, but I well, mean, I don't feel like I, there's something to be frowned at. Like, if I didn't write my own music, I, I, hip hop is the only one that does this to its artists. Like mm-hmm. pop artists, country artists, like everybody else gets other the writers, writers, a team of songwriters, a team of credentials on their album of people that actually like pen all those lyrics that you love but hip-hop they're like no write your own lyrics write your own lyrics mm-hmm, but it's mm-hmm. like guys it's calm yeah. down. it's cool it's okay yeah. it's especially okay. nowadays especially nowadays it's yeah. it's it is happening more than we think um but i think it's because of that old school hip-hop right it is you because think of nas you think of you know all those people you're like that would have been blasphemy yeah, you know to hear that I think, back then. i think it, it definitely um stems from the bravado that is inherent in, within hip hop. Mm-hmm. The, I did this myself. I, you know, pulled myself up. Like I did what I had to do to, you know, succeed. So it's so tied to the voice of the people and the voice of that artist that's speaking and telling their truth and telling their story that it's, how can you have somebody else write that and it still be genuine? Mm-hmm. So I definitely see where it's coming from, but we live in an era now where it's like, People also buy into personas. They buy into lifestyles. Mm-hmm. They buy into, you know, an idea and not just a person. So I feel like we should, you know, just give it a little more leeway. It's okay. Leeway. It's okay. I agree. The game, the game is changing. The game is changed. I agree. I agree. Um, who's your favorite artist? Like, who do you like? <sighs> right now, um, I really love Cardi. Okay. I do love Cardi. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, yes, we know, does yeah, not write her own write, stuff. Right, right. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Her shit's flame. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who wrote it. Okay. I'll pay. I'll pay. She's so great. Um, but yeah, I really love Cardi. Um, of course, the usual suspects, you know, the Drakes, mm-hmm. the Beyonce's, the Coles, all of the, Yeah, the Coles, Kendrick's, like, the, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, admittedly, I'm getting old and, mm-hmm. you know, these young cats, I'm like, what is this? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> right, 21 cool. who? Go 22 on, young whippersnappers. Yeah, like, 
Mm-hmm. Little uh, boo. Everybody's a little this, everybody's a little, a little that. It's like God, 22, I sound like my parents. 23. What's happening here? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there's, like I said, the, the, the game is changes. changing. There's yeah. a lot of new stuff. There's a lot of, you know, new trends and mm-hmm. new tangents that music and hip hop, especially, is taking. It's amazing to see whether you listen to it or not. Like, you still have to respect the, mm-hmm. you know, evolution of the game. I agree. I agree. Where did it begin with you? Where did the passion start for it? Like, how long has this been going on? You know, that you've been into music, seriously into it? Um, Seriously into music, probably within the last, it's just been within the last, within the last decade. Okay. I grew up in a musical household, but as what happens when you grow up in a musical household is somebody's at the bottom of the totem pole of talent. So when That's you're getting true. like crushed when you're younger, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, I didn't feel like it was something that I was strong enough to do, Mm -hmm. like talent wise. It didn't seem like something my ability would ever, you know, be good enough to do. So I kind of just chalked it up as to, oh, you know, I like music for Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I like to sing along with the radio. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll live with that. You know, I was doing other things. It wasn't something that was detrimental to my mental health that I couldn't do it or, Mm -hmm. you know, was failing at it. Um, And then in college... I uh, I went to UTA here in Arlington, and I took the scenic route. I was in school forever. It was driving me fucking bonkers. Mm. But, you know, you stick it out because that's what people say. You graduate from high school, you go to college, you get a job, you start a family, you live your life, you die. Blah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're on the path. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My last semester in like my seventh year of college because at this point I've changed my majors multiple times I'm not really sure what's going on I had like a major car accident and Mm -hmm. like took me out for a little bit like it was just taking forever Mm -hmm. and uh my final semester I can't afford to go anymore Mm -hmm. I've already racked up debt but I've passed the point to get another loan so I'm like two projects deep in my final senior class and they're like, say, fam, uh, the last check ain't clear, so you got to go. I like, see them coming into class knocking. I'm like, I'm like, Are you, you serious? <laughs> Up. Through the glass. <laughs> um, Put the pen down. Yeah. Put the pen down so, and come with us. At that time, I was, I was actually going for my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Visual Communications. I was doing graphic design. Um, mm-hmm. I was also taking like, some painting classes and stuff, and that's what I was doing. And so that hiccup (laughs) happened Mm -hmm. and it was just like what do I do with my life now you know when you've Mm -hmm. been in school for that long you've literally been in school since you were five years old Mm -hmm. I was in my early 20s at the time and I'm just like "Uh, where do we go from here Mm -hmm. Mm, what's happening Mm, what's going on Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it was it was a complete blow to everything that I you know knew about my life at that time Mm -hmm. it's like I'm not in school what am I doing I'm just working like what what does that mean for my future? What's happening? And I was already on the cusp of a bit of depression from just coming out of high school and having that car accident early in college. And that was just the, just the straw that broke the camel's back. And I was just like spiraling and just kind of like pulling away and just, you know, it was just really dark time. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I had some good friends of mine that were in a group in the city called brain gang, which is like, it was like the Dallas TDE. Which okay. is a bunch of rappers that also did their own like solo stuff, but came together to do uh, music as well. And one of the guys, 88 Killer, he's still he's still here doing music. He was like, you know, come to the studio with me. Let's just hang out. Let's, you know, I'll introduce you to my producer. You know, we got to get you just out of the house. Mm-hmm. So we go. We're hanging out. I go back with them like a couple times. And finally, they're like, um, they just give me a track and they're just like, what can you do to this? And up until this point, I've never rapped. Rap mm-hmm. was not something that was on my radar. Rap was not something I remotely thought I was capable of. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, I'm not a rapper. What? No, mm-hmm. we don't rap. I was writing spoken word, but I was like, that's different. That's not rapping. That's mm-hmm. spoken word. Not the same. Cousins, not twins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Different. But I got that first track, and it was a no-brainer. Like, I started rapping. Like, I wrote the so lyrics. it came easy to It you, came easy. It was... Part. It mm-hmm. was just this is what we're doing this is what we have and it was like something within me just clicked and it felt so right and it felt so good and it was obviously that was a feeling I hadn't had in quite a quite a while so it really helped pull me back and like 
bring me back to myself. And it turned into something that I was like, how have I been living my life without doing this before? And mm. like, what, how did we, how did I get this far and not know that this would be something that was so important to my like self, like to who I am and who I define myself and how I express myself. How did I get this far? Mm -hmm. Yes. Let me do this some more. And here we are now. And did you, was there anyone that was in your life that maybe even identified or saw, saw something in you, saw that in you before you even seen it in yourself and kind of helped you move it along? Or was it just all you where you're just like, okay, I, I, I get it. This is probably something I need to do. Um, I think just that first response when I released like that first like track and people were like, wait a minute. It's pretty good. Because, and okay. actually when I first did it, I didn't immediately tell people it was me. Mm. Um, I kind of released it just as like a, I had never used the name Sam Lau before. Like I was known as Sam with the hair before. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just the girl that like did art. I dated Jeremy, like, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So it had never been a, yeah, I hung around with brain gang, but it was never a, oh, Sam's part of brain gang. Sam does music. Sam's on these tracks. She's performing in the city, that mm -hmm. type thing. Um, it's kind of like Kanye when he started. Right? He was just the producer. <laughs> yeah. And people didn't realize, like, they didn't take him seriously. Like, dude, you don't rap. Yeah. And then, like, boom, he, he started doing his own fringe. thing. You're fringe. Like, mm -hmm. you're there, but you're not, like, the mm -hmm. important thing that people came to see. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely having that brain gang tie in the beginning because they were already solidified in the city. Like, fools heard that there was going to be a brain gang show. And it was like, oh, shit, we got to go. We already know what we're doing this weekend. So that was, like, really cool to get that cosign from them because then people knew that I was serious without me having to like really, you know, beg for the listens. Um, and then once I released that first project, it was my first EP. It was called West Pantigo. Um, it was just like six songs. Mm -hmm. Once I released that, it like caught fire around mm -hmm. the city. And like I was, you know, publications were hitting me up. I was booking all these shows. People were like, where did you come from? What are you doing? How have I never heard of you before? And just that that feeling of not only being good at something, but as an artist, having people appreciate and identify with what you were saying and what you were presenting and giving them, mm -hmm. you know, it just feels right. It feels good. Like as an artist, that's kind of what you strive for. It's like, yes, at the end of the day, you're like, fuck what anybody thinks about what I'm doing with my art. You still want to be beloved. Like you still want people to, you know, appreciate the hard work that you're putting forth. Right. And you, speaking of that, you've had a couple of milestones that I've seen, or at least, you know, some accolades, mm -hmm. right? You've gotten awards. Um, I believe you got an award for, was it the best uh, hip hop uh, video, was it? Yes. So, um, I got a couple of those. Actually. Yeah. Like, you, it, was a, it was a couple things here. It's a couple <laughs> things here. And then also, I know you performed that Super Bowl last year yeah, in yeah, Houston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty big. That was a, <laughs> you that know, was like, a how did that deal. happen? Um. It was one of those times where I had done a show with the Sufferers, um, which is a band out of Houston. They had come up here for a show. I opened for them. You know, obviously I came to be good friends with them and their management. And apparently their management was booking artists for the Verizon Live Super Bowl show that they were doing uh, that weekend. And he just called me up. I was sitting at my day job mm -hmm. and he's like, hey, you want to perform uh, at the Super Bowl stuff? And I was like, excuse me? Mm -hmm. He's like, do you want to perform the Super Bowl? I was like, yeah. It's real casual. Yeah, like, I do. I do. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to play casual. Yeah, you got to play yeah, cool. You, you don't want to be casual. like, you don't want to be like freaking out, yeah. even though inside you're yeah, freaking you're out. Like, and I remember calling Jeremy. Mm -hmm. I was like, you will not believe mm -hmm. the phone call I just got. So mm -hmm. like, that was just really freaking cool to be able to do that. Like, mm -hmm. it was just amazing. did you, did you have a lot of people during that time that was like, girl, let me get some tickets. <laughs> like, yo, hook me up. Like, you course. know, if I know y'all have been like, yo, of I'll course. take the drive. Like, That's what everybody slide does. Slide me a little something. It's it's funny. Did we always happen? joke because mm -hmm. Jeremy does it, too, where it's like we put our phones on do not disturb on show days, our show, mm -hmm. you know, performance shows. You got to put your phone on do not disturb because you've been telling people, hey, I'm doing this on this date. Hey, I'm doing mm -hmm. this on this date. Hey, I'm doing this on this date. And inevitably, mm -hmm. 50 people are hitting your phone day. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, what are you doing today? Where is it? Mm -hmm. What time is it? Mm -hmm. What do I need? How much are tickets? It's like all of that is listed on the 50 flyers I posted before today. Mm -hmm. What's going on? <laughs> 
People always late to the party. The people close always. to you are always late to the party. Always. It's yo. not it's even just like, people close to you. And yeah. part of that is just like social media and right, the environment right. we live in today. You're people constantly get being, thrown so much stuff yes, at them. You're right. constantly bombarded with information. So I mm-hmm. get it. You missed it, but you didn't miss 50 of them. You saw mm-hmm. it. You liked it. <laughs> I can see that you liked it. And you continue to not process the information. Mm-hmm. That's not my fault. <laughs> in terms of performing, mm-hmm. right? Because um, well, how many how many venues would you say you've performed at? Ooh. Offhand, because uh, just ballpark figure. Oh, maybe like close to fifty or something. It's a pretty good number. And so, I know I've hit mo- some of them like multiple, multiple times. Time. Yeah. What I'm always curious. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because we see from my perspective mm-hmm. when I see artists and I see people on stage and they're doing their thing, I'm always curious what's going on in that person's head, right? Because, you know, I think about things that I do and how I am in the moment, mm-hmm. you know, doing those things. So I'm always curious about artists. So if you could describe, like, you know, you're on that stage and offhand, what would you say is the biggest? I mean, uh, it's the Super Bowl probably the most people <laughs> is what I'm thinking offhand. But like, you know, so you've clearly been in front of a lot of people. It's not yeah. a room full of five or six. Like, there's a lot of people. What's going on in your head? Um, so when that first step on stage, when you hit like the edge of that curtain, not even before you hit the edge of the curtain, I'm usually freaking the fuck out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm usually talking myself off a ledge (laughs) Mm -hmm. and like trying not to hyperventilate because I'm Mm -hmm. like, yo, you got to go on stage. You need to make sure you got your breath up. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Get it together. Mm -hmm. Like I always do like a little yoga, get my stretches in, try to like center myself, calm down, like that sort of thing. Um, And then whenever you like hit the stage, one of two things happen. You say that first word or you just walk out and you can sort of feel the energy in the room shift. Sometimes it's a good shift. Sometimes it's a bad shift. And that's usually where you can see, okay, what's going to happen. Obviously, when it's the good shift. Yeah, I was just going to say, give me give me an example of both shifts. So clearly so, a good shift is, you know, a resounding crowd. They, they, yeah, they're hanging you know, they on your every they word. Come out, you know, they hang on your every word, you know, that sort of thing. How do it's you like, navigate through a bad shift? Uh, bad shifts are really hard because what can happen is, um, so I, I can't speak for other artists. I know mm-hmm. for me that I personally can feed off the energy of a crowd. So when the energy is good, you know, it's easier to reflect that back. Correct. When you have a room full of people that are just staring at you, like, why are you here? <laughs> That's very hard to keep your energy up Mm -hmm. because it's it's easy to reflect back what they're giving you Mm -hmm. when they're giving you like, why are you here? Then you're you wrap it along like, why am I here? What am I doing? You ain't got no energy. No, you're not having any fun. You're being a boring performer. It's very easy to fall into that trap. So when you've got a crowd that's, you know, lukewarm, tepid, if you will, Mm -hmm. um, you got to do your best to really move past that it's with it's just being me and my dj dj imperial d plug plug love mm-hmm. him um we were always really good about okay with the crowds not giving us anything we'll just continue to play off each other like obviously we still play off each other okay in a regular okay. show okay. but when i'm not getting anything from the crowd we try to amp it up even more between each other to keep one another you know mm-hmm. high energy like where we're mm-hmm. supposed to be um but yeah, those shows are always weird, especially when you're, the crowd's just been looking at you the whole time and you might get a woo here and there. But other than that, it's just kind of like, mm, I don't know. And then you get off stage and you walk through the crowd and everybody that sees you is like, hey, man, you did a great show. It. Like, yeah. I loved it. It was amazing. I was, and I was like, really? I couldn't <laughs> fucking tell. That's a, yeah, that's those funny. Those kills mm-hmm. me. They just kill my soul. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, thanks. Mm-hmm. But you know, it'd be helpful if I could get mm-hmm. like a clap, even mm-hmm. a half ass clap. Like, you got a shit way of showing it. Yeah, thank yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. The best feelings, though, especially so, I mean, I'm a female rapper. We're few and far between. And when someone finds out you're a female rapper, they automatically assume that you're shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Me having kind of a, a, you know, an ambiguous name, Sam, most of the time people assumed that I was an Asian dude that was about to get on the stage. True. Sam Lau, they're like, yeah, True. Asian guy. Never heard of him. Let's see what he's getting. Mm-hmm. Not what you're getting. Yeah. <laughs> it's not what's <laughs> happening here. <Clearly> not. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So there was occasionally sometimes where I would go to a show and I would step on stage and people had not done their research. They had no clue who I was. Mm -hmm. And they were like, why is this girl on stage? And you see that sort of ripple happen as I'm walking, you know, onto the stage or whatever. So now they're intrigued. And now they're intrigued. They're like, why is this girl Hmm. here? They Mm -hmm. said that her name was Sam. Mm -hmm. Hmm, What do we have? Mm -hmm. And then I open my mouth and I start rapping and they're like, oh, fuck, Mm -hmm. what's happening? And then they catch a couple bars and they're like, oh, she's Mm -hmm. not shit. Mm -hmm. So those shows were always fun because it's like, ha ha, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. You thought I would suck. You didn't think that I was going to be a girl. Mm -hmm. And I got you. Mm -hmm. Um, So those those were always like really feel good shows. Why do you speaking of that? But why do you think is there's that stigma in your opinion that, you know, female artists are looked at a certain way compared to the male counterparts? Um, Again, I think it stems from the inherent bravado that exists within hip hop. Uh, That sort of braggadocious, like bigger personality, Mm -hmm. like that hard, like, you know, sense tends to be attributed to dudes. Mm -hmm. So with hip hop already having that connotation of that's all that hip hop is, is this very like masculine, strong, hard, you know, persona to have a woman step into that frame of mind that people have about hip hop they just can't they can't like reconcile the differences that they have about what a woman should be and what a man should be Mm -hmm. because automatically when they see a female artist they're like oh she's a singer Mm -hmm. because even I get that I get to a show and they're like oh you're a singer it's like no I'm about to get on the stage and rip my ass off like Mm -hmm. it's like yeah I'll sing to you too I can croon please don't get it twisted Mm -hmm. but I'm gonna rip my ass off when I get on the stage and then you know it happens and their minds are blown and they're just like Oh, well, who writes your stuff? It's like, I write my stuff. I did it. Okay, well, who does this? It's like, I do that Mm -hmm. because it's my shit. Mm -hmm. And they just can't contemplate, like, you know, they're like, what do you mean? It doesn't, that doesn't compute. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. And it's it's weird. I feel like it's getting a little, like, it's getting a little better now. Mm -hmm. Like, there definitely is a crop of really great female artists that are coming up and female rappers that are coming up that span the, you know, spectrum of what a hip-hop artist is. Like, you have the conscious rappers, you have the club rappers, you have the trap rappers, like, you have the sexy rappers. Like, women can embody all of those different things as a hip-hop artist, just like a dude can. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I feel like the bar is way higher for female artists. Mm-hmm. dudes can be shit artists all mm-hmm. day long there can be 50 of the same kind of shit right. male artists and people are like yeah i fucking love him i love him i love him i love him it's mm-hmm. like they all sound the same mm-hmm. they literally they all start with little something there's a there's a blueprint there yes there's that a guys blueprint. can consistently use yes where when i think about the women there's like, not a blueprint there's really not or here's the names that come to my mind mm-hmm. right i think i think queen latifah i think mc light yeah I think Little Kim, clearly. Yeah. Shout out to Brooklyn. Um, I think, and, and this is old school people, mm-hmm. I think. Um, Foxy, Foxy But yeah, Brown. but that's where your mind goes. Right, Immediately that's where, that's where like it goes the to school. them. And then, because they were there in that mm-hmm. beginning of hip hop. So mm-hmm. they have that like solid footing in the inception of what we know now as hip hop as mm-hmm. like in the forefather, you know, you know, realm of mm-hmm. what it was. But I don't know what happened after that, that it was like, nah, chicks can't rap. Mm-hmm. they can't rap this is solely dudes women can't rap and if you do rap you've got to be like super butch right or you've got to like be wearing no clothes mm-hmm. those are the only two options you get yeah. yeah and those are the only two frames of reference mm-hmm. we want for you which is so weird like mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. but i mean it's definitely getting better because as you can see we now have female rappers that right. you know nikki go across the I whole know. spectrum right Cardi, like, like we've got said. the Nikki's and Cardi's and even on the, you know, not super mainstream levels, you've got like your no name gypsy, you've got your rhapsodies, right. you've got like, you know, those other women that are out here rapping their ass off and fucking killing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not getting the mainstream looks, but they're creating cult followings that will mm-hmm. continue to pay their bills mm-hmm. for a while. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's good to see. I want to see it faster. I want to see more of it. I want people to, you know not immediately sort of scoff at the idea of a female rapper. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll get there. In terms of you getting awards, right, Mm -hmm. how do you feel, you know, or which, because you've gotten various ones. Mm -hmm. Um, I hate to to say, you know, put you on the spot where one means more than the other, but 
I would want to know, like, for one, what's the feeling like when you do achieve something, you do get mm-hmm. awarded for something? And then is there one that maybe you didn't expect to get or that one meant something more to you maybe because of something else that was going on in your life mm-hmm. or maybe, you know, like, it's not to say everything else you weren't appreciative for, but, like, maybe that one was the one where it's like, yeah, I'm kind of glad I got that one. You know what I mean? Like, I've worked hard to be recognized for that particular yeah. one. Um, I don't know if it was one specific award. I think it was the group of Dallas Observer Music Awards that I won in 2016, I think that was. Um. I got nominated for five awards and I won all of them. Get the hell and that out. was that, yeah. royal flush. You yeah, just royal flush. Just, all the, hello. Yo. Um, that was really important because the album that I won for was called Spectrum. It was my second project that I ever released. And I was so nervous about that particular project because I wasn't certain if the first one was a fluke. Mm. Like I wasn't cer- sure if my reception and how people perceived me was just a one off and they were like, all right we've exhausted that we're going to move on to something else. So there was so much stress on me, um, creating that next body of work. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I got close to finishing that particular album. And I had a bit of a falling out with the producer that I was working with. And I lost the whole album. Like Mm -hmm. I pretty much ended up having to start from scratch. Get out of here. So like, yeah, I had my lyrics and I had my melodies and stuff, but I had no beats. I had, you know, I w- had full songs already finished. Like, I was in the mixing and mastering stage. Like, mm-hmm. you know, okay, we're going to release on this day. Like, I just got to get these few songs finished. And, you know. Started over. Damn. Just fucked it off. Just Damn. gone. Um, so that was a huge blow as well. Because now not only am I dealing with the, oh, I don't know how people are going to receive this. Now I have to come up with something completely new. Like, mm. I have to come up with something fresh again. I have to pretty much start over. And um, so that was just a hard journey. It kind of lit a fire under me, though. Um, Not that I wasn't working hard before, but then it was a, oh, now I really got something to prove. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I released that project and it was still received great because it had been like, two or three years since my first uh, EP. So uh, then I was like, okay, maybe it's been too long. Maybe I missed my window. People don't care anymore. When I released it, it was the same thing. It's like all the publications, booking all these shows, doing all these things. And then Dallas Observer Music Awards come up and I get nominated for best female vocalist, best video, best hip hop slash rap artist, best um, album and best music video. And it was just like, whoa. Fools really love me. Okay, this is great. You just cleaned it out. Just cleaned it out. And I thought, before it, the the award show happened, I was like, there's no way I'm going to win all of these. Like, mm-hmm. I might win one. That'll be tight. Maybe I'll win two. That'll be really fucking cool. And then the night that happened, it was like, and the nominees for, you know, best music video. And the winner is Sam Lau. And the nominees for best female vocalist. And the winner is Sam Lau. And the nominees for best hip hop slash rap artist. And the nominee, the winner is dope. Sam Lau. And I'm so just dope. like, Holy shit. And mm-hmm. what's crazy about the Dallas Observer Music Awards, I don't know why they do this, but every year the whoever the alcohol sponsor, that's what the trophy is, just a bottle. And I think it was like okay. I think it was Jim Bean that year. Mm-hmm. So I walked out with like five bottles. Mm-hmm. I still have them at the house because I don't drink. So they're just wow. up there. Wow. Like the only one that's not there is I gave one to my dad because the music video that we shot, we shot part of it in his garage. Oh, so I was like, Daddy, you get to have this one since mm-hmm. we shot part of it mm-hmm. here at mm-hmm. the house. Mm-hmm. And even he was he doesn't drink it because it says like Dallas Observer, like a winner. So, yeah, and he's he got, got it on the shelf. Yeah. He's like proud and shit. I'm like, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. But um, I feel like that was that was like a really crazy, crazy moment for me. And it just felt so good. I think of those, probably the best hip hop slash rap awards, because obviously everybody I was up against were all dudes. And they were like the top dudes in the city. Like they were like the really strong players in the city. So I wasn't sure if, you know, the biases would come into play mm-hmm. about, you know, the girl in the boys club. Mm-hmm. But I'm happy to say that I fucking held my own and I did what I needed to do. Even on the stage with those same artists, it's like nobody walks away and is like, man, I don't know why that girl was here. They're like, yo, she fucking killed it. Like mm-hmm. she belongs up here. So it was really good to win that award. It felt really good. Oh yeah, I'm sure you deserve it. You do you do a lot of different things. That's that's dope. Clean house. Psst, that's dope. Yeah. Um 
So in you know, in terms of you obviously being an artist in Dallas and having success, mm-hmm. people from the outside looking in usually don't typically associate Dallas with that type of genre or music or artistry at all. Mm-hmm. What do you say to those people and, and what are the reasons that you are here clearly making a name for yourself when you could have easily said, I'm going to take my talents to L.A. I'm going to take my talents to, you know, New York or, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the places that are more well known for people coming out of those type of um, cities. Why Dallas? Um, First of all, I lived here and the cost of living is much better. (laughs) (laughs) Than the other two I mentioned. Yeah, 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 Yeah. it is. But I think... um, yeah, Dallas sort of flies under the radar when it comes to your L.A.s and your New York's. But I also feel like that is probably a, a plus side to Dallas. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, it seems like, oh, we're not getting the same looks as those artists. But as a Dallas artist, you also get a chance to um, grow and fine tune your craft here before going to those places. So whereas somebody... if you were just starting out and you moved to those places, I feel like it would be a little harder to sort of like figure out where you want to sit as mm-hmm. far as your artistry, like exactly who you are as an artist and, you know, what type of, you know, music do you want to do or what exactly are you trying to say? And I feel like you get a really, you really get a chance to explore that mm-hmm. here. I don't want to say on a smaller stage, but on a smaller stage sort of. Mm-hmm. So it's more like a, like a market research sort of thing that you can do here in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And they're really great artists here. They're, there's some real talent here in Dallas and there's talent here in Dallas that still manages to pay their bills and still manages, you know, to live an artist's life and they didn't have to leave and they didn't have to mm-hmm. go and they still managed to be successful in their own way. Mm-hmm. Are they big, just as big as those artists maybe coming out of LA or New York? Maybe, maybe not, mm-hmm. but that doesn't make them any less than, um, And I feel like having built a resume here, it would be easier to go to those places because then you can be like, okay, well, I have this many years under my belt and I've done this, 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 and this. So it'll put you at least a little further ahead of the pack, just a little bit. Um, But yeah, I feel like Dallas has its own flair, its own like feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, The scene here is very diverse. I feel like you can find just about anything Mm -hmm that you want to listen to just walking up and down through Deep Ellum one night. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I I kind of equate it to a big fish, small pond Mm -hmm. type of thing, right? Where you can can stand out more in an environment where everybody's not doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you are able to attract people, you can do a lot with those people compared to being somewhere else where it's like everywhere you turn, somebody's doing the same thing and you have to have a lot of things working in your Mm -hmm. favor in order to really stick out from everybody else. So um, definitely get that point. I want to talk about just in terms of you being a mom now Mm -hmm. and you clearly, because you've had all the success in Mm -hmm. in your recent mom. So was it, I'm trying to think of a way to say this, but but respectfully, it's Mm -hmm. like, was there any hesitation to have, to to because artists do feel this. I'm, yeah. I'm just this is from what I see. Yeah, no. You do have artists that will say like, you know, I don't want to have kids now because I'm focused on my career. They know that you know that might put things on hold and they yeah. might be on an upswing. So I think I think it's a fair question, respectfully. Yeah. Did was that going on in your mind or was it just a situation where it's like that really wasn't and now that it's happened, you you worked it out. Like was that going on in your mind at all in terms um, of your career? Had you asked me that question like three years ago, I'd be like, I ain't have no fucking kids anytime soon. I got mm-hmm. shit to do. Mm-hmm. And then sometime last year, I just remember looking at my husband and I was just like, I want to start a family. Like, I don't want to wait. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'll ever win a Grammy. I don't know if I'll ever like, you know, quote unquote, really pop. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to put my life on hold or my desire to have a family on hold Mm -hmm. on some woulda, coulda, shoulda. When we now live in a life, we live in a world where you can do both of those things. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to restructure some stuff. You might have to approach things a little differently, but it's not impossible to still have a career and have a family at the same time. Um, And once we had had that discussion, as both since both of us are artists and we're like, okay, we have to figure out how to do this balance, and we were like, we can do this, then we started trying to have a baby. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it just so happened that we were blessed enough to do so. Um, Has that changed the way that we approach our art and, like, how we work? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. there's no way we were going to get by without doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't, it wasn't detrimental in any way. Um, obviously I'm taking a little, a little break for music. Mm -hmm. right. My, uh, I had intended to perform more while I was pregnant and then morning sickness was like, bitch, you thought, <laughs> Uh, because morning sickness is not just in the morning. Mm -hmm. I remember the last show I had was uh, last February and I was like eight weeks pregnant and I was actually performing at Deep Ellum Art Co across the street yeah. and um, I was miserable. I was so sick that day and my sickness started like later in the afternoon. Like once the sun started setting, like I just mm -hmm. progressively started getting sicker and I was like, God damn it. I got to do this performance. I'm probably going to throw up on stage. Fuck it. We're just going to throw up on stage. So I'm feeling terrible. I'm feeling sick, but I'm like, I still got to do the show. So I get up there. I still perform. Like I do what I got to do and I'm staying after because I'm waiting to get paid out. And finally, my husband was just like, hey, you just go to the house. I'll wait and stay and, you know, collect your, your money. And I was like, all right, cool. So he goes to walk me out to the truck and we get like halfway there and I'm like, hey, I'm going to throw up. And he's like, what? You're going to throw up? And I was like, yeah, right now. And immediately like, threw up. And he's like, all right. Mm -hmm. And then I went home and I was like, I can't do any performances pregnant. Like, mm -hmm. we're just going to have to wait. Um, and that's what worked for me. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, you had Cardi out here busting mm -hmm. it open on the mm -hmm. stage while pregnant. That is great for her. I mm -hmm. couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could have if I had all that money. But mm -hmm. I mean, we'll never know. <laughs> a couple million dollars on you know, you know, 50 mil. If I, mean, I had a whole squad a of people, like, <laughs> carrying me around, like, maybe. Mm -hmm. but, um, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Like, I... I still did some recording, um, still had some songs ready to go. Like when she finally, when my daughter finally came, um, and now me and my husband will like alternate, like he stays with home at home with her during the day. Cause he works from home. Mm -hmm. I still have a day job because you know, artist life, mm -hmm. we still got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I get home, he, you know, goes to the studio, does his paintings, does what he needs to do. And if I need to go to the studio, then he's at home with her and I go to the studio, do what I need to do, come home. And obviously that works for us because we realize as partners, we we are literally partners mm -hmm. in what we're doing. We're partners as parents. We're partners as artists. Like we work together and we help one another and nobody's art is more important than the other person's. Both of us mm -hmm. got to get it done. And that's what works for us. That won't work for everybody. That's not what everybody's got to work with. Mm -hmm. But it, you know. It helps us. It works with us. We always keep each other motivated. It's been really interesting uh, with a child. Like, obviously, everybody's like, you know, your whole life's going to change. Mm -hmm. Things are going to be different. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to do the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. And we just been running around and, like, still doing shit. And, mm -hmm. like, what were they talking about? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just, like, an old school way of thinking. Right. right. I feel like now, like, you don't have to subscribe to that school mm -hmm. of thought like if you can make it work you make it work like we went to our basel mm -hmm. and we took her with us so we're scrolling around miami beach with the fucking mm -hmm. stroller and we're like all right yeah we're out mm -hmm. here like mm -hmm. and it was no different than if we would have gone you know with just us because we're not huge party people we don't do all the partying and drinking and smoking and shit so it was it was like no this is we just got to make sure she's okay mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the only new thing but um it's like i going to be getting back in the studio more and I'll start performing again, probably at the top of the year. And we already got her little baby headphones That's and noise up. canceling headphones. She's going to be up. coming to mommy's like sound checks and shows and shit. Mm -hmm. It's like, I wish somebody would tell me I can't bring my baby in here. It's like, bitch, this is my child. Mm -hmm. What you going to do? Tell me I'm not going to perform. Mm -hmm. Who's losing money. Then? Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, speaking, speaking of Jeremy ran, you know, I had him on the show um, recently and he spoke very highly of you and, in. Mm -hmm. One of the there were some things he said that mm -hmm. I was hoping that it, if I had the chance to sit down with you, I would give you kudos for that and really ask you about that. Because, you know, he talked about uh, moments in his life where, you know, when he made the decision to really pursue him being an artist mm -hmm. and he felt like he felt very relieved when you kind of I'm going to say gave him the green light, but just your support. Yeah was important to him because again he he obviously knew his decisions is not just gonna affect him so he's thinking about you and for you to say yo do that go do it kind of gave him like hi right, then I'll, then i'll go do it you know yeah. what i mean like if, if you're with me i'm gonna go do it and i'm and he talked about how that that changed things for him mm -hmm. and so it had me thinking because i'm sure there's a lot of brothers out there there's a lot of people who are trying to pursue things and 
you know, the women that they have in their life and some, you know, sometimes they're not as supportive and they feel like, you know what, I'm, I can't really pursue it. And or they feel like they have to choose. Right. Yeah. Clearly, you guys have a great relationship where you, you're able to 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 support him. Mm -hmm. But if anything, like what really made you believe and and accept that and really say, look, go and do that. I'm going to help you this way. I believe in you. You know, where did that come from? Or how can you how can you explain that to somebody else who might be going through that same situation yeah. or maybe talking to the woman who's like, I don't know how to support. It's, that's a scary moment. It is. Right. Scary. And it's like yeah. I much, you know, women, most people want stability. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like they don't want to take that risk, but it's so important. Yes. And they're not thinking about how, yo, that little cosign or that little like, all right, cool, let's let's try. I'm mm -hmm. with you. Could could give that person just the the confidence, the extra boost that they really needed. Yeah. So you clearly recognize that. Can you speak to like what what made you, what allowed you to do that and take that risk? Um, I feel like a lot of it was obviously I could see that that fool hated going to his job every day. <laughs> it was killing him inside. And I, I hated to see him like that because I knew he like artistically he was suffering. Like when you spend all that time killing yourself at a day job you try to come home and work on your own stuff. It's harder. Like you're mentally drained. You're physically drained. You're emotionally drained from dealing with fucktards all day. And you're just like, what am I going to do? Like, what, what do I have to do? Um, and I hated seeing that for him. And I also knew we, Jeremy and I are not risky people. We do not like taking risks. We're not fly by the seat of our pants. Like we want to look at, okay, what are our options? Let's weigh the pros and cons. Um, what are the possible outcomes for this? What What's going on? So for us to like take a risk like that, it was really important to go through things, but it was also important for me to support him in what he was doing. It was a bit before I started doing music. I was working full time and I was like, it's tight, but if things go awry, I can float us, you know, until, mm -hmm. you know, things mm -hmm. start happening. And I was fine to do that because as an artist, I also understood that need to at least try it, to at least try and see, can I do this? Has this desire within me become something that I can use to support my life? Mm -hmm. Can I do that thing where it's like, if you love what you do, you're not going to work every day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And I wanted him to go for that in that moment. I mean, at the time we were like, we didn't have a child at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, so what if something happened where we were falling off? Like, it's just us. Like, it's cool. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything really tying us down. Mm -hmm. um, so it was important for me to just push him to do that, to at least give it a try. It's like we said, like, you've got your whole life to work for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've got a little, you know, a little bit of leeway to try to make something else work, go for it. Like, try it now. Because who would have known had he stayed at that job if he would have been able to try it later on? Maybe we would have had a child sooner mm -hmm. and then we would have been like, well, I don't know if we can really take that risk of not having a steady, you know, nine to five income to take care of our child. Um, I think because I'm an artist and recognize that, that made that an easier decision right. for me to push him right. for somebody who is not an artist. And I, mm -hmm. before I was dating Jeremy, I dated dudes that were not artists. And because of that, I did not. At the time, I was just doing like drawing and painting and stuff, but I hid that part of me because they were not supportive. So when you don't have that support system in your spouse, you can't be true to yourself. You can't grow as an artist. You can't become better. You can't look for better opportunities to, you know, push yourself and what you're doing and spread what you're doing and try to, you know, make something of it, mm -hmm. um, especially make it lucrative. That's harder to do when you don't have that. Mm -hmm. Um and I know that that's also hard for someone who does not understand what you're doing right. as an artist right. to support. It's like, I don't, this is, because a lot of times it's not real to them. It's like, you're making shit, you're pushing paint around a canvas. Like, mm -hmm. what is what is this? Mm -hmm. What is this? It's not the, tr the traditional, yes. you know, uh, he's a doctor, she's yes, a it's lawyer. it's not a traditional a yeah, people, way of yeah. making money. Right. It's Anything not, outside that is considered a risk to most people. Yeah, right? it's not super reliable. It can mm -hmm. be very risky. It doesn't, mm -hmm. there's no real rules to it so it's just mm -hmm. like I don't know how you exist within this um, so I can see how that would be hard to 
say to someone, even if you love them, yeah, go ahead and do that because Mm -hmm. you're just like, that's a huge risk. Like that's a very difficult thing to wrap your mind around. Um, But ultimately I feel like it boils down to how much do you trust that person? How much do you actually know about their work ethic? Because what I knew about Jeremy's work ethic is that man is a hustler. He will get out there and do what he needs to do. He Mm -hmm. will find a way to make it work. So I knew that that would help him. I knew that that wouldn't work against us. I know he wouldn't be, you know, quote unquote, going to the studio and really he's sitting there playing 2K all day. Like I knew I didn't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. If you have to worry about that, maybe you need to have a real conversation (laughs) with your spouse first about work ethic Mm -hmm. before you're like, hey, yeah, quit your job. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's to anybody that wants to quit their job to pursue art. Like you really have to look at your work ethic. Mm -hmm. I am not the best hustler, admittedly. I'm not I'm not good at talking to people when it comes to like business stuff all the time. Like I don't like cold calling people. I don't like being like, hey, can I perform me? And blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just not good at it. I it makes me nervous. It makes me so anxious. Like it freaks me out. When I get into a situation, I'm fine talking, but it's like taking those first steps. Like mm-hmm. I just struggle with. And he helps with that a lot. Like I've I've got a team that helps with that. Mm-hmm. There was a time there where I was like, yeah, I'm going to quit my job and just do music. Mm-hmm. Great. It did not work well. Mm-hmm. I ended up back in, a, back in a day job because I just, while I'm good at working on stuff on my own, I'm not the best at like, I'm going to get out there and do this, do this, do I this, do you. this, do this. Like You're self-aware, I, you know, and, and, and that's, that's very important. It's what I had to, to be. To be very <laughs> self-aware and very conscious of where you are in, in the phase of things. And so, yeah, you, you tried it, you recognized it. Yeah. But you, but you still, and, and what I admire, and I, and I said this to, to, to Jeremy as well, is that you at least pursued what you were doing on the side, mm-hmm. you know, at the time that, you know, you, you, you work in a day job. Yeah. You still, you didn't necessarily give up those things. You still pursued it. Where exactly. most people, they kind of, there's a lot, there's plenty of people out there that wanted to do certain things. Mm-hmm. They didn't even try. They got caught up at work and they wake up. It's 30 years later, it's 40 yeah. years later. They never even, you know, tried it, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, definitely and you, you definitely just have to try. Like, I personally need the structure of of the day job at this, at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, music is still, like, it's still kind of flighty. It's still kind of hit or miss. Mm-hmm. And that stresses me out way too much. Like, it just stresses me out way too much. It's too flexible. Like, it's too kind of, like, all over the place where I am right now. And it helps me to have something that's consistent and something that's steady and something that I know is going to be, you know, the -hmm. same, something I can know how to anticipate. I know how to navigate and I can frame the rest of what I'm doing around that. It helps keep me grounded. And that's just me. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like if you're somebody who knows that you want to do something else and you can't even with a day job attempt to do a little bit of that, like, do you really want it? Exactly. Do you really have the work ethic for exactly. it? Because, I mean, I don't feel like my my work ethic is any less just because I don't consider myself a hustler. Mm-hmm. Like, once I have something, like, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability mm-hmm. every time. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to try to get things on my own. I just am not the best at it. But I also realize that. So it's just, people have just have to be self-aware. You can't look at, you know, who you follow on Instagram, or who you follow on Twitter, and all these other people that seem to be doing it because you're looking at everybody's highlight reel. Mm-hmm. And when you look at everybody's highlight reel, you miss all the hours they spent in the gym. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. you're not willing to spend some hours in the gym, you can't expect to have a highlight reel like that. I agree. It is what it is. I agree. I'm sure it's a big benefit, though, having, you know, y- your husband by your side who's mm-hmm. who's doing things that can assist you directly. Yes. The music videos, the photography, yes. the, you know, just from a creative, you know, somebody to bounce ideas off mm-hmm. of. Um you know, how do you I'm sure that plays a big part in you and your guys being able to give each other the freedom because there's Absolutely. that there's that mutual respect there. Absolutely. Um, how do you you know, how do you guys keep from how do I say this? How do you guys keep from like tearing each other up? You know, what I mean, because <laughs> sometimes it's, especially when you're passionate about your thing. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, don't you know. This is my shit. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, you <laughs> don't know. Break my stuff, yeah, man. like don't, you know, don't, it's 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 still my thing, you know. And it's like, you know, respectfully giving the opinion, like, how do you guys keep from like, look, I, taking a person. Don't come to the studio. Yeah, don't yeah. come in the studio today. Why? Because you're too, 
you know, you're too harsh or you too, you know, you critique it too much. Yeah. Like, how do you how do you have that balance? I mean, that still happens. Okay. Both of us are very competitive, first of all. Okay. We are extremely competitive. And that that works for us. Like, we feed off each other. Like, we'll see one do something. We're like, ah, damn, that's just fire. I'm about to do this. It's about to be better. <laughs> like, we push one another in that way. And that works. But we are also... Um, I won't say particular, but we're still particular. Mm -hmm. And we also don't want to see the other one fuck up. So even if we see that, oh, they're in love with this, this, they feel like this is the best shit ever, we'll still pull the other one aside and be like, all right, babe, you've done better. You can do better. Like, you need to tweak this, dial this back in, you know, maybe revisit this at another time. And yeah, it hurts. There's been times where Mm -hmm. I come home from the studio with the new track. I'm like, ooh, babe, I just did this. Ooh, listen to this, listen to this. And he's looking at me like, He's like, yeah, babe, what you mean you ain't feeling that one? This ain't you the ain't listening to nothing else no more. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And like, yes, it hurts your feelings, mm-hmm. but once that emotion has sort of simmered down a little bit, you realize, okay, yeah, they're right. I can go back in and make this better. Yes, this is not my best work. Um, and I feel like the reason that we do not tear each other apart or like hurt one another with it is because we're also upfront about that. Like, we know that it's not coming from a malicious place. We know that we're not actively trying to hurt one another's feelings. We're not trying to, you know, cut deep. Mm-hmm. We are just flat out saying, this is what you can do to make this better. And we're also not offended if that other person does not take that advice, mm-hmm. which is another thing. It's like one of the things that we always joke about is we take ownership of ideas and mm-hmm. like things that we're a part of. It's like if somebody comes to us or one of us goes to the other, we're like, what do you think about this? And we give them their, our ideas or, you know, our thoughts behind it or what they can do to make it better. We want to see that happen, but we also recognize that's not ours. Mm -hmm. We can't put our stamp on that. We've got to let them do what they feel is best. So because we are on the same page with that, it works out. We don't have, you know, blow ups or people being, mad at each other mm-hmm. you know i'm gonna sleep in the living room like mm-hmm. we don't have any problems like that because, you know the intention because yes. you know the person's intention yes off. we know it's not the intention to tear the person down it's to make you better it's to, exactly you know it's so you don't take it super personally mm-hmm. it's not negative yeah um he told me you know there was there's you know the, you guys go out now and people are starting to really recognize you guys mm-hmm. in other places how do you deal with um you know you're going places now and people are like really gravitating towards you or really excited to meet you like have you had anybody approach you that was that did something that really blew you away where it's just like girl, you know I really love your music you know or like you've really helped me in terms of wanting to pursue the same thing and like did you have that moment yet or those moments um I've had a couple there was this one girl um a couple years ago I performed at the Development Arts Festival and she met me afterwards and she was like crying and I was like what 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 somebody's mm-hmm. crying when they've met me and she was just so sweet and just so loving. And um, another one, there's this little girl. Um, her name is Marley. And I met Marley probably within that first year that I started performing. I performed downtown at the Main Street Garden Festival that they do down there. And Marley's mom brought her. And she's probably like two or three at the time. Mm-hmm. Way too young to be listening to my music, but shout out to moms for like exposing her child to like music festivals that early. And Marley looked exactly like I did when I was little. She's a little mixed girl. So for me to see her, even just as a three year old dancing along and loving my music and like Mm -hmm. excited to meet me afterwards when I got off stage was really important because I remember being that little girl who didn't have anybody that looked like me to look up to. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is like I've kept in touch with Marley like. We've hung out like she's come to my other shows. She does like School of Rock or something. And like I've gone to her shows. So it's been a really special sort of relationship that is built from my music. And it means a lot to me that, you know, she, you know, writes on my birthday card, keep producing music like she's really excited about it. So like that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Um, And just like little stuff like that. This one weird time I was going to Target. And somebody almost hit me in the parking lot. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Mm -hmm. And like a couple hours later, I get on Twitter and somebody had DM'd me and they were like, were you at Target earlier today? 
I was like, yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> and they were like, that was me it's that almost right. hit you. I'm so sorry. They were like, I just couldn't believe it was you. And I was like, uh, what? things. <laughs> So they they almost hit you when you were out the car or were you in they the were, car? They were, was I was a, walking. You were walking. I was walking okay. across the parking lot and they just like weren't paying. Like they were like <laughs> looking too much to see if it was yeah, me it was to you. realize, hey, you're getting too close mm-hmm. and you're being a creep. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that was pretty interesting. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, I've, I've seen. I see you met some Lupe Fiasco. Yes. You've met some people in the industry. Was there anyone that you met that um, really surprised you in terms of um, them being a cool person, or just like what, what's that experience like? Was everybody kind of even keel? Man, Lupe was really cool. Mm-hmm. Him and his team were like really cool. Um... I don't know that anybody's like really standing out. Um, damn, I feel like I'm gonna remember like a really mm-hmm. good story to tell when I get home tonight. <laughs> I'm be like, shit, I should have told him that story. I've seen, I see a couple people, but right now, like nothing particular is is coming to me. Who do you see? Who do you see? Um, well, I see Lupe. Um, it's my man right here. Lupe was especially like important because. Uh, he was one of the artists that Jeremy and I bo- bonded over when we first started dating. Ah. Like on one of, like on our first like unofficial date, I remember we were in the car and uh, I didn't really know who Lupe was at the time. And mm-hmm. Jeremy, but he was like Jeremy's favorite artist. So he was like playing all of his music and like breaking down lyrics. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like this and this and this. And I was like, man, that's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really, really tight when we got that call that they were like, yeah, Lupe wants you to open for him when he plays in Dallas. And I'm like, oh shit. Really? Yeah, that shit was tight. Oh, that's dope. So, yeah, that was that's definitely one for the books for that mm-hmm. little marker right there. And I told him that, and he was like, man, that's super tight. Because mm-hmm. obviously, like, we were married at the time that I did that show, so it was mm-hmm. like, we're going to marry him because Lupe is awesome, and mm-hmm. we had a great first date bonding over Lupe. That's dope. So, that's dope. Yeah. How do you, um, in terms of the music industry, mm-hmm. right, are you, what frustrates you about it? You know, just, I, I'm sure there's, there's, what frustrates you about it? What frustrates me, artist, especially right? uh, at the level that I'm at, is all the middlemen. There's so many middlemen in the music industry who can't really do anything but know people. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's a, I don't want to call it a necessary evil because I don't feel like it's a necessary evil. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's something that people have just found a way to um, sort of just cheat the system and sort of cheat artists and I don't fuck with it. I realize that it happens, but it's just not fucking cool. Um, I hate the whole pay to play bullshit. I feel like that is the shittiest of shits, especially in the hip hop industry. I feel like it's so prevalent in the hip hop industry because I've talked to artist friends that I have in other industries mm-hmm. and other like genres. And they're like, what do you mean you have to sell tickets to your own show? What do you mean if you don't sell those tickets, you don't get to perform? Like, what do you mean you have to pay to get on stage? And it's like, why are you doing that to artists if not just to fuck them over? Like at that point, you account for no, like you're not contributing anything to the music scene. You're not mm-hmm. contributing anything to the growth the growth of the community of artists that you claim to support. It's just like, why? Why would you do that? And it sucks because in some ways, in some instances, you have to play that game just to get the FaceTime with, you know, the audience and the crowd and stuff like it's but it's bullshit at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's a lot fucking of politics, bullshit. It's, a lot it's, of- yes, it's a lot of unnecessary politics. It's a lot of people with their hands in the pot when they didn't contribute to the meal at all. And you're just mm-hmm. like, why are you here? Why are you getting any of this? But somehow they're still, you know, the gatekeepers or sitting in the upper echelon of people that you have to get through in order to get anywhere. And it just fucking sucks. Like it's mm-hmm. enough to make you real jaded about the whole process, but you're just like. I just got to keep doing what I'm doing and hope that that's what works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that was going to be my next question, too, is like, how do you then keep going? Right. Because there's always obstacles. There's always stuff that comes up. Mm-hmm. And it, it, this is a two part thing. So there's, there's those things. But then also as an artist, when especially in the beginning, as you're mm-hmm. kind of building up. OK, so, you know, you there's the there's the business side of mm-hmm. things. Right. There's the politics side. Mm-hmm. But then there's also the side where you as an artist where Things may not be going as quickly as you anticipated. People may not be as, gra- you know, gravitating to that that song you put so much effort into. Um, 
how do you kind of stay the course? Um, I think especially nowadays, you have to remind yourself that sometimes people just didn't see it, especially on the internet. Like there's so much information and people are constantly bombarded with everybody's song and everybody's photos and everybody's, you know, thoughts about random bullshit that happened that day that it's very easy for things to slip through the cracks. And it's something Jeremy and I constantly have to tell each other. It's like, just because you put it out there doesn't mean they saw it when you did or listened to it when when you did. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's very easy to fall into that trap of, oh, nobody's listening or nobody cares and nobody's looking for it. And the sad fact is nobody's really actively looking for anything. They're just letting things come to them and they're picking up on things here and there. So they might have missed what you did. Maybe they weren't online that day. Maybe they were involved in some little trolling battle on Twitter and they just missed mm-hmm. it. And you just have to remind yourself it's like it's not personal like mm-hmm. that's another thing it's like it's not that somebody was doing something to you it's that they were doing something for themselves right so you kind of just have to decide okay am i doing this solely for the accolades or satisfaction of somebody else you know receiving it or am i doing this because i actually actively enjoy it And I think as long as you still hold on to the, I actually actively enjoy this, Mm -hmm. you'll be able to, you know, get through those times where it seems like nobody's listening. Um, Also, just again, due to the nature of the society that we live in today, it's much easier, quote unquote, easier as an artist to put your works in front of people yes. because you have wider access to individuals that you would never ever see mm-hmm. or meet in real life Different countries yes it's just, yeah. the whole world mm-hmm. is out there and sometimes all it takes is you know posting it to this website or this forum or this thing or just you know word of mouth that happens via the internet and via friends that you've never actually met in person um so i feel like that really works favor in works in the favor of artists today. Mm -hmm. Like artists back in the day, pre-internet couldn't do that. If somebody wasn't actively at the bar or at the club or at that show to listen to that song or maybe hear it when it came on the radio at that exact moment, you were missing it. Literally, there wasn't a way to be like, oh, well, I'll just go home and listen to that later. It's like, Mm -hmm. no, do they have that at the record store? Like, can I buy that later? Like physically? Mm -hmm. Um, So this whole, the internet-based society that we have now works in the favor of artists in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, But it also is in like a weird spot because you have that old school of thought of, you know, the record labels who are like, yeah, you're my artist and you can only do this. And I got to take, you know, this percentage of this, but there's plenty of artists who do not need the record label machine behind them because they can create that grassroots. Mm -hmm. They can create that, you know, cult like following mm-hmm. on their own right. they can go directly to the source yes they can cut they can out that middleman right, yeah, they, they can go right, right to the, to the audience they don't need them to do, they can put out a post exactly. they can put out a tweet they can go on youtube they can for the most part get directly mm-hmm. to the source they don't necessarily need the machine uh behind them exactly and when you know you're doing tours and things like that then, mm-hmm. then there's just money involved with that but in terms of like getting going yeah you could put out your music. Nobody mm-hmm. stopping you. You can connect with millions of people. Mm-hmm. Um, is your music like is, is it available on like SoundCloud? Absolutely. And then, so it's SoundCloud, everywhere. Title, Apple, mm-hmm. Spotify. It's on you know all of those. And that's another thing. It's like you can just put your mm-hmm. music on these platforms. Yes, it's kind of soured the game because I mean, mm-hmm. if we're looking at it, artists are literally getting fractions of pennies for streams. Mm-hmm. Like even getting millions of streams, you're not getting millions of dollars off of millions of Mm -hmm. streams. The only way that that happens is you're segueing those streams into other Mm -hmm. revenue. A tour. Yeah, you're segueing into a tour, into merch, into other appearances. Mm -hmm. And that's how you're getting your money. Mm -hmm. You're not sitting at the crib and just eating off of streams Mm -hmm. alone. Like there has to be more. And I feel like that has created artists that um, have to be like more multidimensional, like they have to be able to do those things and try those other revenue streams because of that. Mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me, I think the last person to really pop off of that soldier boy, <laughs> right? Like it's like once that happened, it was like, whoa. And then a lot of people started doing it. But like you said, now it's like you can't even, you got to do other things. You got to yeah. do the mixtape thing like Nipsey yeah. did, you know, sold it for a hundred dollars a pop, mm-hmm. you know, like you got to find 
other ways to to move forward with it. Yeah. Um, because you can't just get it from from the uh, streams, and then all these deals that were made, deals with yes. Apple, deal with. It's like you know, it's not like back then where it's like I have to get your album. Mm-hmm. I could legit just like one song. Yes. Listen to it through Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, or even listen to YouTube, whatever. Yeah. And. All that money that went into the album, nobody bought the album. Yeah. You Jeremy and I were talking about that uh, the other day because we were like, you know, again, like we obviously bounce ideas off each other and, you know, talking to him as well as like other musician friends that I have. It's like there's really not like it's an old school of thought to be like, yeah, I have to make this 15 track album mm-hmm. because nobody's listening to mm-hmm. 15 track albums. Even when someone releases it, you're like, why the fuck is there 15 tracks on this goddamn album? I don't have mm-hmm. an hour and a half. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Am, what? No. What are the highlights of this album? Yep. So it's like, it almost makes sense as an artist to just be like, release a really strong, like, four to five song EP or just keep cranking out singles because that's how people consume music now. Yeah. They don't have to, you Agreed. know, they don't have a six CD disc changer in their vehicle and they're like, oh man, these mm-hmm. six CDs got to be fire all the way through because mm-hmm. I can't go in the trunk and change all these discs. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not something that we have to deal with anymore. They can literally just fire up and be like, all right, well, here's my playlist and these are all my favorites from all of my favorite artists. Like, mm-hmm. they don't have to be so, you know, I mean, they can be more picky about what they like. Mm-hmm. So it's just one of those things. It's the way that the game is changing. It's the way that the industry is moving to fit more with how people consume music and consume information. Mm-hmm. There was, there's two things. Um, and this is a little different from, uh-huh. from what we said, but I just, I noticed it. Um, well, I'm, let me start with the first thing. This okay. is still, which is still more on topic. What I noticed you, you did Roxanne. I, I noticed yes. the post of Roxanne, Roxanne, and yes. I thought that was pretty dope. Uh, because of the Netflix, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, movie that that came out earlier this year, and you you know you was able to put so you performed at the concert after the show. Yes, and this is when it was was that when it aired was that May fourth like when it came out? Um, yeah, it looks like it. So they did a screening at uh, the Angelica downtown. Mm-hmm. They did a screening of the movie. Roxanne was actually there, like mm-hmm. she was actually there for the screening. She like performed afterwards. And they had got me and um, some of the like female DJs that are in the city to, you know, do like just like a female show afterwards. And I remember it. I got to see a preview screening of the movie before it actually hit Netflix. Okay. And obviously, my story is nowhere near as you know tragic as hers. Yeah. But there were definitely moments there where I was like oh, that cuts me deep because Mm -hmm. that had happened. Like, you know, the dudes that are trying to come up on you Mm -hmm. and like, oh, you can't possibly be here to perform. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like just sleazy things that occur just as a woman in the music Mm -hmm. industry that I just really, to just, you know, Mm -hmm. really got me. Um, And then to be asked to perform and with her actually being there, it was just an amazing experience to be able to see, you know, one of the greats and like one of the people that, you know, are like hip hop royalty mm-hmm. um, to have them there and have her listen to me and like see me perform. And then afterwards be able to tell me that, yeah, you got it. Like you fucking. So, it. oh, snap. You're right. So yeah. she was there. She was actually there. Oh, no. Yes. The real Roxanne. The real. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not the. OK. That's yes. what's up. So that was that was, you know just really amazing to be able to be a part of an event like that. I think when I, when I watched it, I think a lot of people was just kind of like, yo, that's Nas. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, that's what I was saying. I was like, yo, is that Nas? Yeah. And so, yeah, I thought that was pretty dope. It just kind of showing like, um, you know, how things just, are intertwined. Yeah, how things and like, are all connected and, and you just never know who's going to become what. And mm-hmm. like, yo, that's Nas. Um, I thought that was pretty dope. Yeah. There was, um, I'm going to tell you right now, the, uh, so you're a DBZ fan? Oh my God, yes. So, you know, I had to bring it up because I'm, I'm looking up and I saw the costume and I said, wait, 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 wait. I got to ask her about this because, yeah. you know, DBZ, for the people out there who are listening, those who Dragon follow Ball know Z. Dragon Ball Z <laughs> has a cult following. Did you, did, first of all, did you know that, you know that they're coming out with um, Super Broly in Jan- next month? Yeah. I look, I, I kid you not. It was in my research, me looking mm-hmm. up things, and I saw it, and I remembered it. 
was like, oh snap, they coming off Super Bowl. I went to like see if the tickets was available or whatever. Almost every like the local like the day comes out, yeah. which is like January fourteenth or something like that. North Park, all the sold out. Yeah, I, I was always so mad. I was like, somehow damn. missed those. And was like, Why? I was like, damn. So, you know, there's there's clearly there's a following, yeah. right? There's a huge following. So I just, I, I saw it and it was just like, yeah, is she really a fan? Like, or was that just for the moment? So you. No, actually really a fan. I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon. What's funny is my mom is the one that got me watching those. <laughs> like, I, I don't even remember how, but I remember she used to be like super anal about making sure that there were clean tapes in the VHS so that it would record at 3.30 when it came on. Mm-hmm. Um and like I just remember we used to watch watch it all the time like she we had the 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 VHS boxes that lined up and had the different pictures on the side of all the sagas and stuff like we like were legit in that in our house we were absolutely watching it I kind of fell off in like the Dragon Ball Z Kai area like the the newer stuff I'm kind of just like meh but it's definitely like a huge part of my childhood like a cosplay as Vegeta like Mm -hmm. And I made that costume myself, mm-hmm. like as badass. Yeah, like, I, like I, I like you I like know, like that. building costumes and like cosplaying and shit. Like that shit's just super tight. Because mm-hmm. they have the uh, the Comic Cons yep. versions, you know, over here in Dallas, and, yeah. I, and I went to it. I probably, I'm telling you, I probably we there. probably passed. Yeah, each we other. probably passed each other because I went to that one and I thought it was pretty dope. Yeah. Of um, who's your favorite character? Just curious. Um. So I really loved Trunks for the longest. Trunks was was my dude. Um. But the older I get, the more I'm like, yeah, man, Vegeta. Vegeta mm-hmm. was just trying to, like, save his planet mm-hmm. and, like, get his bro back from mm-hmm. being like, yo, fam, you crash landed on this planet and you forgot who you were, man. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. He was just mm-hmm. trying to be good and, like, mm-hmm. trying to beat Goku all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, he grew to be my favorite, too. Yeah. In the beginning, it was like, you know, clearly there's Goku. Yeah. That most people know, you know, he's the main you know, Oh, man, the main Cell guy. Saga Gohan. Gohan yeah, was the I was going to say Gohan. Gohan was the truth But he wasn't Cell really. Saga. But then he got older. Yeah, he got like, older. He just like, he, saying, man. he ain't Get really about that life. Get the here. <laughs> what are you doing? Piccolo didn't raise you Exactly. To he wasn't really about that life, so I was just like, eh. But yeah, yeah. Machida's like, he's always been about that life. You always. Know, he on site. He always. was an on site actor. Mm-hmm. He was like, yo, I'm ready. I'm Cameron ready. Rock. I'm ready. Let's do it. It's like, he had a family, everything. He still was about that life. Like, yo, I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. It was it was just it was just funny seeing you uh, <laughs> with that man. I was like, yeah, I gotta bring that up. Like, that's pretty dope. I still have that armor in like a closet somewhere. Yeah, I didn't have the heart to throw it away after. Oh, I was nah, hell no, I wouldn't throw that away. You crazy? That shit, yo, it was dope. You could use it for Halloween. You could do. You could. Thank yo, you. I'm telling you, it was it was fly. <laughs> what y'all did was fly. Um, was there anything? Because uh, man, I, we've talked, and uh, was there anything that I missed? Anything you wanted to mention? Um, I don't know. I this is again one of those questions where it's like on the spot. You're like blank, blank, <laughs> blank, and then I'll get home tonight and be laying down to, to go to bed and be like, oh shit! I, <laughs> <talk about that." laughs> I want to say this. I want to say that. Well, is there? I guess here's what I would ask you in terms mm-hmm. of the bigger picture mm-hmm. for you. Um, where would you? What's the bigger picture that you see for you in terms of you as an artist? What would you like to see in, again, not putting a time frame around it, but just like where do you, what's the direction that you really want to go with the things that you're doing? Um, this may not be the most popular opinion or may not be respected in any way, but I want to be like, the type of artist that would that would happen if you took like Will Smith's career and like Beyonce's career and put them together because like Beyonce is obviously like a huge idol but if mm-hmm. you look at Will Smith Will Smith parlayed his like music career into like a whole thing like obviously he's still making music and I don't care what anybody says Will is still fire okay yeah like he still yeah. fucking killed it okay there's very few people that could cross over exactly you know I think about LL you know, clearly he he did the rap and he yeah. was able to cross over into acting. Mm-hmm. Will Smith, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, tons of movies, Men yeah. in Black, etc. Drop music wasn't crap. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's like not everybody can do both. Yeah. So, and yeah. like I really like 
I mean, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a one note person. Like <laughs> I'm a Gemini. I'm super like flight, not really flighty, like just as like a bad friend, but like flighty, just like, I like trying new things. I like being good at stuff. Like, you know, I like doing more and I really love music. I absolutely do. Um, and I want to take that further and higher and as far as it can go. And in this day and age, that also means like branching out into, you know, other streams of entertainment. And I would love to do that. I feel like that would be so you, really amazing. I'm, I'm hearing acting potentially yeah, in the future. I would love to do some acting. I'm hearing. Um, I would love to do some more like behind the scenes, like mm-hmm. songwriting for other people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like, um, I love when I get to work on music videos with my husband and like mm-hmm. doing that sort of thing. So it's mm-hmm. just like. So taking a more behind the scenes, more pivoting into different avenues of entertainment. Yeah. Okay. So I see what you mean. Cause normally, you know, as an artist, people would say, you know, I want to have 10 albums and billboards and this yeah. and that. So you're, it's I'd not love necessarily to do like a world tour here and there, but it's also like, I would feel just as accomplished. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that would be more than an artist. Kind of yeah. Like, yeah. Especially today. Right. Yeah. Where it's like, there's this, there are these avenues available mm-hmm. to you and the sooner you can pivot, the sooner you can realize yes. Because like you said, the attention span is, is very low for people mm-hmm. and it's hard to really stay hot. Yes. You know, you got to really, you know, you almost got to go away, do something else and then kind of come back. Yeah. You know, because the staying there is very difficult. They'll now. get bored easily. Yeah. Very easily, man. And, and it's so, very hard to continue to top mm-hmm, yourself. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. No, I agree a thousand percent. Um, But I'm excited for you. I'm Thank excited you. for you. Uh, I think uh, you, you guys are doing some great things. I've heard nothing but great things about you guys from other people. Meeting you today, um, you know, it, it, it live up to all of that. You've exceeded oh, all of that. So I know you guys will do very well um, in the future. So let people know mm-hmm. where to find you, maybe some projects or some some things that you have coming up. Let people know. Um, so once again, my name is Sam Lau. Hopefully you know that now if you sat here for this long, (laughs) but yeah, you can find my music on Spotify, Apple music, Tidal, SoundCloud, all of the above YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's all there. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's just at the Sam Lau. Yeah. Love it. And, and do you, you do merch? Like, is that part of Jeremy's thing? Or is that like your thing? Is Is that, that's your thing? So you got okay. So she she has some merch on right now. This is now. actually uh, it's, it's, one of the. I'm tracks just gonna say, B, I'm here. <laughs> oh, I'm me. B, I'm me. <laughs> you gotta watch the. Uh, you gotta watch the YouTube. You'll see the rest. I, I just, you know, respectfully. <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys, I, I love it. Um, I love what you guys are doing. You have your own thing. It's funny when when I saw you and I was like, man, I love the the hoodie. Is that your thing? And and I feel you. Like yeah. we gotta get to that point where it's like you know, create your own things. Mm-hmm. You have more pride when you it's something you made yeah. up. Take control of it. Like we we invest so much in other people's things mm-hmm. that aren't really investing back into us. Yep. Making Tommy Elfig, we're making Louis Vuitton. We made all these people way more money. Yeah. You know, well, and they're not plenty of talented yeah, people. There's in plenty our own of backyard. talented people. There's plenty of ways to express yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's really what coding is nowadays. Is it's it's a form of expression. Exactly. Um so yeah, kudos to you. Definitely you. guys, I'll I'll leave the links and everything for people to check it out so that way you can pick up some stuff. But I want to thank everybody for watching um the Bill Fanny Thing podcast. Leave a comment down below, leave a like, share this video with your friends. Um just you can listen to it on iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, Spotify, SoundCloud, you name it. It's everywhere. Definitely follow Sam on all her social um, media as well. And we thank you for listening. We thank you for watching. Peace out, everybody.